okay? Can you hear me okay? Yes. All right. Well, just thought I'd let you know we're sitting in a parking lot at Whole Foods because we had to go to Little Rock, but it looks like it's going to work because we have our iPads with us. Oh, but wow. If, there, if there's a glitch, that might be why. But okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, we're going to, um, our topic today is about um, the rainbow, and we are going to share our notes and read them and um, with you and so I'm going to share the screen. Awesome. Okay. Oh, but I should start with a prayer, okay? okay? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, for our many blessings, for your mercy, your love, and your guidance in all that we do. Thank you for being with, for us being uh, together today to study your word, and we pray that you'll be with us as we do help us understand better and um, help us to become fit for your purpose. We pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Okay, now I'm gonna share the screen. Okay. So we even wrote our in, our introduction on <laughs> so we would be able to because we can't remember things, you know. Yes. Okay, Jen. <laughs> <Well, laughs> <gonna, laughs> okay, Jim's gonna start. Yeah, I'm gonna start. So <clears throat> we have been thinking about the gotta move it down here. We have been thinking about the rainbow as a symbol recently, and we discovered that others have as well. Just in the past week, a couple of members put, have put comments on the Bible study thread. It was quite a coincidence because we had been planning to do our study this week on that subject. In January 2018, when the French people came to Arkansas School of the Prophets, their members gave superintendent remarks on Sabbath. One of the presentations was about the characteristics of the rainbow relating to symbols in our message. It was such a blessing. And maybe some of you remember it. Unfortunately, we couldn't remember all the details. So we just copied some information from the resource library, the National Geographic on the internet and have interspersed comments which compare aspects of the rainbow to our parable methodology. Somewhere <laughs> over the ocular dispersion of the electromagnetic spectrum. A, ra a rainbow is a multicolored arc made by light striking water droplets. The most familiar type rainbow is produced when sunlight strikes raindrops in front of a viewer at a particular angle, somewhere in the range 40 to 42 degrees. A rainbow is an optical illusion it does not actually exist in a specific spot in the sky. The appearance of a rainbow depends on where you are, where you are standing and where the sun is shining. Much like our reform lines, what we understand depends upon the context of the dispensation and our point of view as we compare and contrast the histories. The sun or other source of light is usually behind the person seeing the rainbow. In fact, the center of a primary rainbow is the antisolar point, the imaginary point exactly opposite the sun. In like manner, the Holy Spirit is the light directly behind us 
as we study the prophetic word through parable methodology. Rainbows are the result of the refraction and reflection of light. Both refraction and reflection are pheno phenomena that involve a change in the wave's direction. A refracted wave may appear bent, while a reflected wave might seem to bounce back from a surface or other wave front. Light entering a water droplet is refracted. <clears throat> It is then reflected by the back of the droplet. As this reflected light leaves the droplet, it is refracted again at multiple angles. Christ teaches us the end from the beginning. He reflects truth that we can see from our present position. And he teaches us through multiple angles by way of multiple reform lines. Rainbows are actually full circles. The anti-solar point is the center of the circle. Viewers in aircraft can sometimes circular rainbows. The circle <clears throat> is a symbol of eternity, a line that never ends. Parable methodology enables us to understand the circular history of restoration more completely. The returning to the Garden of Eden and eternity. The number 360 <clears throat> which is the degrees of a circle, symbolizes completion, as does the number seven, the number of the colors in the rainbow light spectrum. The colors in the rainbow light spectrum are always parallel, demonstrating the methodology of line upon line parabolically. Viewers on the ground can only see the light reflected by the raindrops above the horizon because each person's horizon is a little different, no one actually sees a full rainbow from the ground. Parable methodology has us look at line upon line, horizons, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. In fact, no one sees the same rainbow. Each person has a different anti-solar point. Each person has a different horizon. Each person is individually created and guided by God. Someone who appears below or near the end of a rainbow to one viewer will see another rainbow extending from his or her own horizon. We have individual experiences with Christ and yet he, like the physics and appearance of the rainbow, is the same today and yesterday and forever. The principles of God's dealing with men are ever the same. The important movements of the present have their parallel in those of the past. And the experience of the church in former ages has lessons of great value for our own time. Parable methodology reveals principles of God's dealing with men that are able to see that we are able to see from the context of our understanding and the midnight cry vantage point as we study the histories of the church and global events. We can share the, the truth of those principles with others, just as we can share the principles and the design of a rainbow seen from where we stand. A rainbow shows up as a spectrum of light, a band of seven familiar colors. The name Roy G. Biv is an easy way to remember the colors of the rainbow and the order in which they appear. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. The colors in the rainbow spectrum are delineated in a particular sequence, just like the way marks on the reform lines. White light is how our eyes perceive all the colors of the rainbow mixed together. Sunlight appears white. White light surrounded Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. The Holy Spirit is what we need to perceive properly. Jesus Christ, the sun, appears in white. 
When sunlight hits a, drop, a rain droplet, some of the light is reflected. The electromagnetic spectrum is made of light and many different wavelengths, and each is reflected at a different angle. Thus, spectrum is separated, producing a rainbow. Red has the longest wavelength of visible light, about 650 nanometers. It usually appears on the outer part of a rainbow's arch. Violet has the shortest wavelength, about 400 nanometers, and it usually appears on the inner arch of the rainbow. At their edges, the colors of a rainbow actually overlap. This produces a sheen of white light, making the inside of a rainbow much brighter than the outside. Visible light is only part of a rainbow. Infrared radiation exists just beyond visible red light, while ultraviolet is just beyond violet. There are also radio waves beyond infrared, X-rays beyond ultraviolet, and gamma radiation beyond X-rays. Scientists use an instrument called a spectro spectrometer to study these invisible parts of the rainbow. Like the treasures we dig for with the use of parable methodology, the characteristics of the rainbow are beyond the surface of vision and must be studied to reveal their intricacies. Rainbow variations. Glow. The atmosphere opposite a rainbow facing the sun is often glowing. This glow appears when rain or drizzle is falling between the viewer and the sun. The glow is formed by light passing through raindrops, not reflected by them. Some scientists call this glow a zero order glow. Could this be like seeing through a glass darkly? having some understanding of God's truth, but needing a clearer focus through our studies and, of course, God's timing. Double rainbow. Sometimes a viewer may see a double rainbow. In this phenomena, a faint secondary rainbow appears above the primary one. Double rainbows are caused by light being reflected twice inside the raindrop. As a result of this second reflection, the spectrum of the secondary rainbow is reversed. Red is on the inner section of the arch, while violet is on the outside. This phenomenon illustrates the chiasm, the mirror image, the alpha and the omega. Christ is the ultimate chiasm and the ultimate parable. Other variations include twinned rainbow, supernumerary rainbow, reflection rainbow, reflected rainbow, red rainbow, fog bow, cloud bow, and moon bow. There are various applications using the rules and tools in the digging of treasures with parable methodology. As applications are made from the literal to the spiritual, our understanding grows. Higher order rainbows. Light can be reflected from many angles inside the raindrop. The rainbow's order is its reflective number. Primary rainbows are first order rainbows, while secondary rainbows are second order rainbows. Higher order rainbows appear to viewers facing both toward and away from the sun. A tertiary rainbow, for example, appears to a viewer facing the sun. Tertiary rainbows are third order rainbows the third reflection of light. Their spectrum is the same as the primary rainbow. Tertiary rainbows are difficult to see for three main reasons. First, the viewer is looking toward the sun. The center of a tertiary rainbow is not the anti-solar point, it's the sun itself. Second, tertiary rainbows are much, much fainter than primary or secondary rainbows. Finally, tertiary rainbows are much, much broader than primary and secondary rainbows. Quaternary rainbows are fourth order rainbows and also appear to viewers facing the sun. They are even fainter and broader than tertiary rainbows. 
Beyond quaternary rainbows, higher order rainbows are named by their reflective number or order. In the lab, scientists have detected a 200th order rainbow. There are higher orders of knowledge we look forward to studying when we are restored to the Eden School. We will be studying God's kingdom eternally facing the sun. The city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. All the treasures of the universe will be open to the study of God's children with unutterable delight. We shall enter into the joy and the wisdom of unfallen beings. We shall share the treasures gained through ages upon ages spent in contemplation of God's handiwork. And the years of eternity as they roll will continue to bring more glorious revelations. Rainbows in Myth and Religion. Rainbows are part of the myths of many cultures around the world. Rainbows are often portrayed as bridges between people and supernatural beings. In some beliefs, rainbows were the bridges that human ancestors took to descend to the planet. The shape of a rainbow also re resembles the bow of an archer. Some cultures teach that pagan gods used rainbow bows to shoot arrows of lightning. Rainbows are usually positive symbols in myths and legends. However, in some cultures, they can be negative symbols associated with demons or disease. Perhaps the most famous piece of mythology surrounding rainbows is the Irish legend of the pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. The gold is guarded by a tricky leprechaun, but because no one sees the same rainbow and rainbows don't end because they're circles, no one ever finds the gold or the magical creature. As we know, paganism counterfeits the structures and symbols of truth. The Bible and the uh, spirit of prophecy have a lot to say about the symbol of the rainbow. Here are just a few. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Behold, a throne <clears throat> was set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. As the bow in the cloud is formed by the union of the sunlight and the shower, so the rainbow encircling the throne represents the combined power of mercy and justice. It is the mingling of judgment and mercy that makes salvation complete. A rainbow is represented in heaven round about the throne, also above the head of Christ as a symbol of God's mercy encompassing the earth. When man by his great wickedness provokes the wrath of God, Christ, man's intercessor, pleads for him and points to the rainbow in the cloud as evidence of God's great mercy and compassion for erring man. In heaven... The semblance of a rainbow encircles the throne and overarches the head of Christ. The prophet says, <clears throat> as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about the throne. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of Jehovah. When man by his great wickedness invites the divine judgments, the Savior interceding with the Father in his behalf points to the bow in the clouds, to the rainbow around the throne and above his own head as a token of the mercy of God toward the repentant sinner. By faith, let us look upon the rainbow round about the throne. 
the cloud of sins confessed behind it. The rainbow of promise is an assurance to every humble, contrite, believing soul that his life is one with Christ and that Christ is one with God. The wrath of God will not fall upon one soul that seeks refuge in him. God himself has declared, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The bow shall be in the cloud and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant. Rainbow concept, flags and graphic emblems. The rainbow concept, flags and graphic emblems have long representative, represented groups championing diversity, respect and inclusiveness. Here we want to share information about a few organizations who use the concept of the rainbow to address issues that we find in our midnight cry message. The Rainbow Coalition was an anti-racist, anti-class, multicultural movement founded April 4, 1969 in Chicago, Illinois by Fred Hampton of the Black Panther Party, along with William Preacherman Vespersman of the Young Patriots Organization and Jose Chacha Jimenez, founder of the Young Lords. It was the first of several 20th century black led organizations to use the rainbow coalition concept. The rainbow, <clears throat> the rainbow coalition soon included various radical socialist community groups like the Lincoln Park Poor People's Coalition. Later, the coalition was joined nationwide by the Students for a Democratic Society, SDS, the Brown Berets, the American Indian Movement, and the Red Guard Party. In April 1969, Hampton called several press conferences to announce that his Rainbow Coalition had formed. Some of the things the coalition engaged in uh, joint action against was poverty, corruption, racism, police brutality, and substandard housing. The participating groups supported each other in protests, strikes, and demonstrations where they had a common cause. The coalition later included many other local groups like Rising Up Angry and Mothers and Others. The coalition also brokered treaties to end crime and gang violence. Hampton, Jimenez, and their colleagues believed that the Richard J. Daley Democratic Party machine in Chicago used gang wars to consolidate their own political positions by gaining funding for law enforcement and dramatizing crime rather than the underlying social issues. In 1967, the Federal Bureau of Investigation identified Hampton as a radical threat. It tried to subvert his activities in Chicago, so sowing disinformation among black progressive groups and placing a counterintelligence operative in the local Panthers. In December, 1969, Hampton was drugged, shot and killed in his bed during a pre-dawn raid at his Chicago apartment by a tactical unit of the Cook County State's Attorney's Office in conjunction with the Chicago Police Department and the FBI. Law enforcement sprayed more than 90 gunshots through the apartment. The occupants fired once. During the raid, Panther Mark Clark was also killed and several others were seriously wounded. In January, 1970, the Cook County coroner held an inquest and the jury concluded that Hampton's and Clark's deaths were justifiable homicides. Judas and the Black Messiah is a 2021 American biographical drama, drama film about the betrayal of Fred Hampton by William O'Neill, an FBI, FBI informant. The phrase <clears throat> Rainbow Coalition was co-opted over the years by Reverend Jex Jesse Jackson, who eventually appropriated the name in forming his own more moderate coalition. Rainbow Push. Rainbow Push is a Chicago-based nonprofit organization 
formed as a merger of two nonprofit organizations founded by Jesse Jackson. Operation Push, People United to Save Humanity, and the National Rainbow Coalition. The organizations pursue social justice, civil rights, and political activism. In December 1971, Jackson resigned from Operation Breadbasket after clashing with Ralph Abernathy and founded Operation Push. In 1984, Jackson founded the National Rainbow Coalition. It merged with Push in 1996. The combined organization's national headquarters is on the south side of Chicago, and it has regional branches in Washington, D.C., New York City, Los Angeles, Detroit, Houston, Atlanta, Silicon Valley, New Orleans, and Boston. Yeah, I noticed that 1996 is a, one of our dates. Mm -hmm. Operation Push raised public awareness to initiate corporate action and government sponsorship. The National Rainbow Coalition became a prominent political organization that raised public awareness of numerous political issues and consolidated a large voting bloc. The merged identity, had, I'm sorry, the merged entity has undertaken numerous social initiatives. Some scholars assert that the original Rainbow Coalition concept was a prerequisite for the multicultural coalition that Barack Obama built his political career upon. In our current history, we are aware of Black Lives Matter and the worldwide anti-racial movement sparked by the killing of George Floyd in May, 2020. The most familiar rainbow flag, flag may be the banner representing the movement supporting civil rights for members of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender LGBT community. The rainbow flag is a symbol of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer pride and LGBT social movements, also known as the gay pride flag or LGBT pride flag. The colors reflect the diversity of the LGBT community and the spectrum of human sexuality and gender. Using a rainbow flag as a symbol of gay pride began in San Francisco but eventually became common at LGBT rights events worldwide. So we want you to notice that these um, movements have become worldwide. Mm. Originally devised by artist Gilbert <coughs> Baker, the design has undergone several revisions since its debut in 1978. First removed colors, then restore them based on availability of fabrics. Baker's first rainbow flag had eight colors, though the most common variant consisted consists of six stripes, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. The flag is typically flown horizontally with the red stripe on top as it would be in a natural rainbow. LGBT individuals and allies currently use rainbow flags and many rainbow themed items and color schemes as an outward symbol of their identity or support. In addition to the rainbow, many other flags and symbols are used to communicate specific identities within the LGBT community. Here is a feminist power symbol placed on the LGBT pride flag. Here is a flag in rainbow fashion citing issues that many of us are familiar with. And I'll read what that says. It says, science is real, black lives matter, no human is illegal, love is love, women's rights are human rights, and kindness is, kindness is everything. Many Christians, including ourselves, meaning me and Jim, have lamented the overtaking of the rainbow symbol by worldly organizations. It is a comforting emblem bonding us in our relationship with our Heavenly Father, the creator of the universe. 
Many feel that it is for those who honor the covenant we make at baptism to keep his commandments. But is it? And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. The rainbow is a covenant from God to every living creature on the earth, and it is mainly about God's promise to us to not destroy the earth with a flood again. It is about God's character, his mercy and judgment. It is not only for Christians or for me as a special covenant with God. It is for everyone on earth. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good for them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be per therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Of course, we cannot be perfect in ourselves, but only through Christ, which strengtheneth us. On the Bible study thread this past week, our brother James wrote. I was studying this morning and read this passage and a thought hit me. The cross was used as a sign long before Christ was ever thought to be placed upon it. God knows when in history, what signs will be used. Why would it be any different with the rainbow? Many Christians claim the rainbow was used as a sign to mock God by the LGBT community. But what if God chose that sign because they were going to choose it, because they were going to choose it? Mm -hmm. The rainbow of promise encircling the throne on high is an everlasting testimony that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It testifies to the universe that God will never forsake his children in the struggle with evil. It is an assurance to us of strength and protection as long as the throne itself shall endure. We are told in the spirit of prophecy that those who were farthest from Christ will be closest. The majority of LGBTQ community are non-believers because of how Christians treat them. Yet the symbol they have chosen is closest to his throne. Mm. This you got to lower it down a little bit. I can't see. Okay. This makes us think about the cross being a long-used and well-known tool of punishment employed by the Romans during that history. Christ was destined to be crucified with an ordinary criminal, and on the cross he met other ordinary criminals. He witnessed to them with his loving character and behavior, and one of them was saved that day. The rainbow is a familiar and ordinary symbol of the sun shining after a rain. It is a beautiful and hopeful sight for everyone. God knows how it brings delight and faith to humans, thirsting for mercy and loveliness in this world. No wonder the rainbow is a symbol of his throne, the seat of love and mercy, as well as judgment. To us, it may also be a sign of prophecy because it has become the symbol of so many as they are plowed for the midnight cry message of equality. So here we have the Rainbow Coalition um, addresses racism, multicultural people and immigrants. Then we have the um, feminist gay pride. Is that what that is? It's the feminist power symbol on the rainbow flag. Yeah. 
which represents sexism, feminism, and pro-choice. And then we have homophobia, which is about the LGBTQ plus community and gender freedom, represented by the rainbow flag. The rainbow pride flag. So that's the end of our presentation. We hope you liked it. Mm -hmm. it made you think a little bit. Yes, that was really a blessing. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is really good. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see, how do I go like this? Share. Did it stop the share? Yep. Okay. So are there any questions or comments? There was a lot of information in there. Yeah. <laughs> you need, we may need your notes. <laughs> well, I just thought it was so exciting about the rainbow is actually a circle. And that is confirmed oh, yes. by scriptures that it, it is a circle. <laughs> the throne yeah 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 that's beautiful and i like that it's got seven colors and uh, they're mm -hmm. in they're delineated in an order a particular order they're, and, they're and parallel yeah they're always parallel no matter how the rainbow bends it's always par the colors are always parallel mm. <laughs> and then also um, Oh, oh yeah, the, yeah. The chiasm. When you have a double rainbow, it makes a chiasm with those colors. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was wonderful. I also thought it was interesting that um, when the colors overlap uh, in the spectrum, they make a white sheen that makes the it lights up the center of the rainbow. I mean, you know, the inside part of the art. And that kind of reminded me of us when we are pushing together, um, we make a bright light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 